I've recently been posting a couple of solo GM speedrun videos where I've been using Strand Hunter and on some of the most notoriously difficult GMs such as Lightblade, I've been completing them in a relatively quick time. I got a 20 minute solo GM Platinum Lightblade clear, and for this season it's the quickest solo run of Lightblade. Obviously other setups like Arc Hunter or Banner of War Titan allow for quicker solo clears, but they are much riskier than a Strand Hunter setup. Additionally, the gameplay loop of a Strand Hunter isn't influenced by other members of your fire team killing enemies, meaning that this setup is equally as good in a fire team setting as it is solo. In the background of this video, you'll be seeing a solo GM Lightblade using this build, so you know I'm not joking when I say it's good in that form of aspirational content. If it's good in a GM, it'll be good for people doing mechanic encounters in raids, as well as solo legend and master lost sectors, as well as lower tier nightfalls. Since the background gameplay is a solo GM, I don't want to see any comments saying that this build isn't usable in a GM. The core of this build is based on Sertarachne's facade, which is the Strand Hunter helmet introduced in Season 20. From what I've been seeing, most people who use Strand Hunter prior to this season would use 6 Coyote for double ensnaring slams, however with the suspend nerf, there's almost no reason to use a suspend build on Strand anymore. As a result of this, Sertarachne's facade comes into the spotlight. This exotic's trait is very simple. Upon grappling, you receive Woven Mail, which is a 55% damage reduction, and while you have Woven Mail, you also receive Flinch Resistance. I don't know how much, it doesn't really matter though, because Woven Mail is the most broken thing we've received in this game since Well of Radiance, and a helmet that just passively grants you Woven Mail for 10 seconds and can be infinitely refreshed isn't bad at all. Before I go over mods and weapons that you should pair this exotic with, I'm going to cover the subclass setup that I recommend. Obviously, we're going to be on Strand Hunter, and in terms of abilities, you're going to need the Grapple Grenade. The dodge is your choice, but I tend to choose for Marksman's dodge because I'm the number one Strand Hunter melee hater, and I rarely have ever found myself in a situation where dodging to get that melee back would be more beneficial than dodging to get an extra rocket off, but that's my preference, and honestly, you're wrong if you disagree. For aspects, Widow's Silk is basically a must. Widow's Silk gives you an extra grapple charge, and when you grapple, at the end of the grapple, it creates a grapple point. And if you're unaware, grappling to a grapple point doesn't actually consume your grapple charge. You can probably see where I'm going to be going with this one. The second aspect is personal preference, I would say between Threaded Spectre and Whirling Maelstrom. I'm a huge advocate for Whirling Maelstrom though, especially in GMs. However, when I run this build on stream, I get a decent number of people asking why I'm choosing for the Blade Blades over the decoy, and the reasoning is that I've never found myself in a situation where dodging to create a decoy would save my life. Additionally, the Threadlings don't really do that much damage on their own, the whole point of this is to just to waste the enemy's times. The Beyblades, however, act as a grapple point, so I can use them for a grapple if needed. They also deal passive damage to enemies, and I find in GMs that that passive damage, especially against champions, is very, very useful. I'm going to be an advocate for not running Ensnaring Slam. I don't think I like that aspect at all, and especially in higher tier content, it's just not worth it. The only thing I can ever see anyone using that for is to stunt unstops mid Strand Hunter Super, but that's so much more niche than just running the decoy or the Beyblades. I'm Team Whirling Maelstrom, but I understand the people who prefer the decoy. Now for fragments, this is where it gets interesting. The two fragments that I desperately encourage you to run are Transmutation and Ascent. Transmutation makes it so when you have Woven Mail, your kills spawn a tangle. This is a must for people who are using Whirling Maelstrom. Obviously it's less important if you're using a decoy, but here we are Beyblade stands. Ascent refills your readied weapon upon using your grenade, while also providing plus 30 handling, plus 40 reload speed, a 0.925x reload duration multiplier, and plus 30 AE for 15 seconds, with a 4 second cooldown between ammo refills. Considering that this build is solely focused on using your grapple as much as possible, I feel Ascent is a no-brainer. If you are a decoy stan, I think replacing Transmutation for Evolution isn't a bad call as the two for Threadlings the decoy forms, giving them that extra 33% damage isn't bad at all, especially considering without that fragment Threadlings tickle enemies. The last two fragments are 
customer choice. There are many different choices you can run. Some of the popular ones are generation to provide that grenade energy when you deal damage. And I don't think this is a bad choice at all, especially if you accidentally waste your grapple. Warding isn't bad as a backup way to get woven mail if you don't have any grapples ready, but it requires you to have an orb already spawned in. Binding is nice because it still allows for suspension uh, and it gives plus 10 resilience, but I find this fragment to be a bit finicky. Propagation isn't bad for giving unraveling rounds as a potential anti-barrier counter, but unfortunately this requires you to use the Strand Hunter melee to get a kill, and as far as I'm aware, no one has ever done this in the nine months that Strand Hunter has been out. Last one I'll give a shout out to is Isolation, which is a very underused fragment. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use this, and this is the one where scoring multiple precision hits emits a severing burst. Sever is where the enemy's outgoing damage is decreased by 40% for 10 seconds, and if we think of this as we're taking 40% less damage due to the sever, we would be getting 73% DR from a severed target while we have woven mail. The burst isn't too big, and our melee severs targets anyway if it decides to actually track to the enemies, uh, so I don't think this fragment is that useful but it isn't a bad choice if for some reason you don't have the other ones unlocked or you want to try new things. For myself, I choose to run Ascent, Transmutation, Generation, and Binding. Obviously, these are suggestions and just what I run, and I'm not telling you that you need to run those four, but I think those four are fundamentally the best for the GM playstyle, and I won't vocally judge you if you decide to choose a different fragments. I think in 99% of situations, binding can be replaced by something else, something like warding. I just choose to use it over warding for my solo GM speedruns to suspend nearby targets in Lightblade and alleviate some of the pressure that I get. Okay, mod time. Awesome. Obviously, with the Lightfall mod change, this part has become so streamlined that I don't even know why I'm mentioning this part anyway, but I will still go over it just to make this video slightly longer for the ad revenue. Helmet run a siphon and a heavy ammo finder and if you have room a hands-on isn't a bad choice if you like to do the grapple melees ashes to assets is the biggest waste of a perk that you can get and i think dynamo is a troll as well because you're not going to be dodging that much we're in pve so targeting mods are useless arms i think a loader dexterity and impact induction are the three best impact induction gives you grenade energy when you use your melee and you could replace Dexterity with a Focusing Strike 2, but I don't think the class ability energy is important as much as something like Handling. Just Peace, run Resist Mods. I, I don't really see why anyone would use anything else here, unless you're just choosing to troll, but that's up to you. Uh, if it's a GM, just consider what enemies you're fighting and base it off that. Legs, I like a Scav mod for my Heavy. I think Recuperation is the best mod in the game and I tend to run a Surge mod or Innervation as well. These mods are your choice. I don't think Surge mods are super important on this build since you're not really doing any big boss damage, uh, but if you like them, I'm not gonna judge you for putting them on. I run one, so it's up to you. Uh, class item, if you know me, you know I'm Proximity Ward's number one fan. I think Proximity Ward is a very, 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 very useful mod, and I think you should run it. Powerful Attraction is always good, and so is either Bomber or Distribution. I'm Team Bomber just to get those grapples back even quicker if something happens. Weapons! Alright, so what weapons would you pair this with? Well, realistically, if you're running Transmutation, anything works. Just make sure you're, you're curating it to the activity you're doing. On my 20-minute solo GM Platinum Lightblade and Heist Mars Clears, I chose Quicksilver Storm, but on Heist Moon, I chose Wish Ender. Uh, the thing to keep in mind here, as mentioned before, is that Transmutation, uh, any weapon can create Tangles, so you don't need a Strand weapon. Obviously, with Quicksilver Storm, grenade kills create Tangles, but Transmutation avoids your need to focus on getting those grenade kills. Also, this season it nullifies Thanatotic Tangles, which is going to be gone next season anyway. Um, but yeah, I think for GMs, Though, the best weapons you can pair this with are Wish Ender and Quicksilver. For non-GMs, or for us risky players out there, a one-two punch shotgun is insanely fun and good with this. So obviously, one-two punch increases our melee damage when we hit an enemy with pellets from our shotgun, and this works with our grapple melee. As our grapple creates a grapple point, we can chain this as long as we have shotgun ammo. 
Additionally, our Beyblades count as grapple points, so we can grapple to an existing Beyblade or a Tangle that we just throw, and this helps us kill champions. So what I like to do is throw a Tangle, grapple, one-two punch melee, the enemy it lands on, and then watch as the Tangle just finishes them off. In terms of champion counter, this is where this build sucks. You're basically forced into running the artifact mods when using this build. Obviously, Wish Ender is intrinsic anti-barrier, but that's really it. Strand does have intrinsic unstop with suspend, but we're not using that, and trying to use suspend to stun an unstop with binding is the worst thing that you can ever try to do. Um, it does have intrinsic AB with unraveling rounds, but again, this requires you to be the first person to ever get a kill with the Strand Hunter melee, so that's just not going to happen. Um, yeah, champion counters is the one downside of this, so just keep that in mind when using this build. Gameplay loop, uh, as with most D2 builds nowadays, again, so simple. This one is grapple a little bit away from you to create that grapple point, or like grapple in the air. Uh, because if you grapple right underneath you when trying to make a grapple point, it just won't work. And then you literally just keep refreshing your grapple when your woven mail reaches two seconds or earlier if you'd like. Kick kills with woven mail to create a tangle, shoot the tangle to create a Beyblade, and repeat. When a Beyblade is up, you can grapple to it and then grapple melee, or you can choose to be a bit safer and not do so. And that's literally it. I hope you enjoy this build as much as I do, and if you're interested in watching some of these solo speedruns, make sure you tune in live on Twitch.